most people who come into meditation late or from other traditions, you know, like uh, pe people are expecting a result already without the understanding of the right effort. I think that's really where it's at. Yes, and, and I agree. And the, thing, the thing to understand is that the right effort has to be done, you know, on a regular basis, not only because of the results, which might be eventually, you know, getting the, the, the fruition or whatever that comes with the right effort, but because it's also improving your life. Like your life is, is going to be better as a result. If you're expecting the fruition only, then you're skipping what's really important, which is like how does that affect you in real life? So um, I, I have these conversations with myself often, <laughs> but I also have them with other people. And, and, uh, and, and again, because, you know, there is, a, especially in the Western, in the Western world where I come from, oh, yeah. uh, people are expecting a mystical experience, you know, and we have had them. A lot of people have mystical experiences and, and, you know, and they, they want to have answers to those my, mystical experiences, but the mystical experience is, I'm finding it to be meaningless without the right effort, which means without the right striving, without how that actually operates in real in in real day to day. Um, see, this uh, is the issue. The issue I think that I see is the difference is that um, we're asking you, we're trying to get across to you that we're teaching you something to put into life and take away from the the retreat center and start living it all the time while you're driving, while you're traveling. Every time, all, all, all everywhere, we had delightful experience with a student that came to meditation in, in Damasuka one time and called us from California after he drove home from Missouri. And he said, you know, when I left here, I started practicing in the car. And he realized everything changed. The way that he checked into a motel, the way he dealt with people, the way he behaved with people in a restaurant, just everything, he was talking about it. That's what we're looking for if we're looking for changing the world. We can't change the world by continuing to go to workshops and conferences and then just saying we're going to change the world. It's just not, in, it's just insignificant. We've reached a limit with it and, and it doesn't seem to work, you know? And I also think that, you know, uh, by practicing saying it over and over, by practicing, you know, doing it over and over and over, Whenever we fall off the wagon, which we might fall off the wagon from time to time, sure. we, uh, there is there is a method or there is a path. There is a recipe that you can follow, and then you know that you can find your center again. That's how. Yeah, at you least... gotta forgive yourself and have a good giggle. <laughs> you have to have. Uh, that's where you're. One of the things Monty said um, to us a couple years into the thing was. You know, how, someone would say, how do you know if you're progressing? And the question is, what is the state of your sense of humor? <laughs> Can you, are you laughing at yourself yet? Because you have people come in who I'm going to do this, you know, and they're so stern and they're going to make it happen. And it's a lot of work to, to keep saying it again and again, like, oh, you know, don't try to make this happen. That's why I came up with the little thing about what if I challenge you this week to attempt, now I said attempt true, but attempt to experience an experience of no experience and you tell me what happened. You see? <laughs> experience and experience of no experience. And what do you mean by that? Well, the, the English is the second language person is like swimming to stay on the surface when you're saying, I want you to experience, which is a verb, and experience, which is a noun, of no experience, which is an adjective. It's simple. <laughs> and I didn't realize when I said it the first time, I didn't realize I was doing that to you. Okay, but the huge part of understanding anatta is I have to get out of the way. I have to give it up because the atta is wanting to make it happen personally. And then the person just starts to move down the path, they start to move. But as long as they want it, even, you know, in, in the case of so, uh, somebody was saying, I'm practicing, uh, what is it? I'm practicing um, determinations, okay? Um, 
And the question was, um, if I say I, the, the, the determination has to be, you have to learn the determination has to be stated a very particular way. Otherwise it fails. And I used to laugh at him and I used to try all the alternatives and they just don't work. Like I will sit this long, or I want to sit in the first jhana today, or um, I will, uh, there was a bunch of them. I wrote them all down and I tried, none of them worked. And as soon as I did it the right way, it worked just like that. I will sit no higher than. See, when I say I will sit no higher than, I'm still leaving it up to mind. I'm not invading the territory. I'm not trying to push him out of the way and say anything else as if he was or he the he she whoever it is was making this everything I don't know what was going on but when I say it I will sit no higher than infinite space that still leaves it wide open I could get there maybe I won't get there you see but I won't go any higher maybe I won't go any higher maybe and it not, the way I kept track of it, he was right. About 95% of the time, it's going to work correctly. Unless you had some desire tucked in here really strong, you know, then it's going to work fine. But you have to step out of the way and allow it to work. We're not used to doing that. We are not used to doing that. We are caught in a complex, competitive, magnificently complicated, simple world. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we got but coming back to right effort it helps us to understand that one of the secrets the buddha found in the right effort was to he was he was um he was seeing the distraction and the moment he realized now we're saying see it but also feel it the tension rising first then do it take the steps then to release from it. We're trying to teach you the symptoms. This is where we go one step further. I was actually trying to um, figure out the difference of what we've done and where it stopped here and what's different over here. It's just to me like going to the next coach in riding my bike long distance from uh, the 10 speed bike to the 21 speed bike. Um, coach that's all this seems like to me we haven't thrown anything anyone has done away but they get very protective of uh this is the thing where everyone has to live in a group we have to belong to a group we have to label ourselves all of that stuff and if we're labeled this way then we're not going to trust looking at anything else so we've we've discarded possibilities the four steps of right effort can be used in breathing meditation and improve your breathing meditation, can't it? Totally and completely. And does it take away your breathing meditation for you to just leave that alone and look at, at uh, metta only? And I got this image in my head, my this image in my head of how to explain this to someone. And I came up with this and I'll leave you with this because it's kind of funny. <laughs> You know, I rollerbladed a lot in my 50s, a lot, long distance rollerblading, but I also rode bicycles. But when I was looking at this problem of not being willing to take your rollerblades off when you want to learn to ride a bicycle long distance instead. So what would it have been like if I had kept, refused to take my rollerblades off and I tried to get on the bicycle and pedal with the rollerblades on my feet to learn to practice the bicycle. This is the dilemma the Buddha had, believe it or not, <laughs> he did. Because if they were practicing this way and refused to give that up when they examine this way, they cannot have this pure experience unless they take off the rollerblades and put them down and climb on the bike and start to pedal the bike to find out what it's like to pedal a bike and that's where I was and I didn't know how to express it to the person without the person immediately turning around and and saying um I can't I cannot do this because I would be losing everything I've ever done before if I do this and that's just not the case at all not the case and this this all the things we're showing you 
the right effort, the right striving, the 37 requisites, as we examine the 37 requisites, we're all involved with the breathing meditation, all of them. So the test is, uh, I guess, if you don't want to do the method, don't do it. But when you're doing the breathing, try to see what happens. This is what initially Bhante was getting other monks to try and other people to try. Just try to see what happens when the distraction comes. Instead of treating it the normal way, just let it go, relax, smile, and come back and keep going with your breathing meditation. This isn't destroying your breathing meditation. You'll probably find out each time you go a little deeper, a little deeper each time. See, when you relax, each time you relax, you go deeper. There is another couple of problems with that too, because of you have to be able to consider something else about your object of meditation than the way some people think about it. It's true. That's just a simple thing. What happens if you don't um, glue your mind to the breath or glue your mind to the arising and falling of the uh, of the the um, the diaphragm and the and the you know feeling the air on the upper lip or the nostril tip? What if you don't concentrate on that? Because the misunderstanding is that that object was simply a returning point to know you were still there. Okay, fine. No, you're there. It's fine. Right. But all the things that I'm showing people can be applied to breathing. And nobody's saying that we're recruiting people. It's not that we're recruiting people. We're just trying to, to establish a way to teach people there's an alternative way to reach path and move down more directly, just as it's described in the suttas. And that's what's fun, to discover that's real. Okay?